What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and we've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. We didn't ask about the biggest or the most important news stories, just the things people had actually been chatting about. And it's our panellists' jobs to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean. Well, I imagine they've been talking about the announcement of the Live 8 gig, which is uh, due to coincide with the G8 summit, isn't it, in July? You know, the G8 summit where the eight most powerful nations all get together in a room and go, everything's going great, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know what the ninth most powerful country is, but I bet they're livid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and they're, doing, they're doing a big... Uh, Bob Geldof's doing a big gig to draw attention to this, and he's been in some trouble with uh, encouraging school kids to take a, a day off school. Is he encouraging them to take Mondays off by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> he's called for a million people to march to Edinburgh. I mean, I think... You know, this is a country facing a massive obesity crisis. I mean, getting someone to march to their news agents <laughs> is <laughs> impossible enough. But most of, the, most of the kids who bunk off go, yeah, I'm going to Edinburgh, and they won't. They're going out in the park and try and get a bottle of cider, you know? <laughs> Put the hooded tops up and throw scaffold tubes at hearses. That's what they do. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if Live 8 is up on our list. <laughs> yes. Okay. You're absolutely right. 48% of people were talking about Live Aid. It was a huge talking point this week. I don't know if you've seen the incredibly powerful commercial where a child dies every time famous people click their fingers. I couldn't help thinking, stop clicking your fingers. <laughs> Last night I went to a restaurant. I killed two kids just getting the bill. <laughs> it's been claimed this week that the Make Poverty History wristbands are made in China by children. Of course, they might not be children. They are a lot shorter over there. <laughs> My brother had the anti-racism uh, wristbands, which is, you know, the black one and the white one. The black one fell off, um, so now he's a racist. Uh... <laughs> Dave, over to you. What do you think people have been talking about this week? Big Brother um, is back. It's sort of indicative of, of, what, of the, the way the programme's going, that the second most important statistic they give you now, when it comes on, is the bus size. It's the breast size, isn't it? It's like Saskia, 34 double F. But they don't do it for... <laughs> they don't do it for the blokes, do they? They don't do Anthony, three and a half inches, on the slack. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen much of it because I've been quite busy this week counting my rice. <laughs> but <laughs> the, the bits I've seen, I mean, you, you were talking there about the amount of large breasted ladies. I was watching under the sound down, it looked like Benny Hill made a rap video. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if Big Brother is yeah. on our list of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> it is. Big Brother was always. Let's face it, Big Brother was always going to be in our top five. Uh, they've introduced infrared cameras in the house. We're excited about the prospect of some nocturnal activity. Bill Oddie hopes to see a badger. <laughs> Sean, back over to you. What do you think the nation have been discussing this week? Well, the bumblebee crisis. What now? What? The bumblebee... <laughs> <laughs> Shit! Don't panic! <laughs> Don't panic! <laughs> Don't panic. No one down. panic! Calm down, it's... it's... What are you talking about? It's... <laughs> what bumblebee crisis? You don't know. No. In the paper when it says BB crisis, you know that's Big Brother, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Female bumblebees, which apparently are the, are the zealous, hard-working sex, are turning into fat, lazy males. Um, this is a crisis because although bees don't, bumblebees don't make honey, they do a lot of bumbling. And um, bumbling levels have reached a record low, and it is a, a real problem. So what you're saying is there's a lot of lady bees yeah. turning into lady boys. Exactly. <laughs> so bumblebees, you're saying, don't make honey? No. Right, no. they just bumble around. They just bumble, and neither do they sting. What do they do? Little fat, lazy shits. <laughs> <laughs> Am I dreaming, or is Richard Maley talking about bees? Because <laughs> I can check if that's in the top five. I don't think it probably is. Well, I think people have got to be talking about the uh, shock horror news that Coldplay have been knocked off the number one spot by... Jack Shearer. <laughs> crazy Frog. That's more annoying than the Crazy Frog. <laughs> You don't have to pixelate her genitals. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Who's that? laughs> Chris Martin has said he wants to catch him and eat his legs. But he's, he's never going to do it. In the video, there's some guy in a rocket bike chasing him. He can't do it. <laughs> what, so you're saying the crazy frog? It's got to be there. It's Let's just... see if it's there. Yeah. Yes! Hey! Yes, the crazy frog was the most talked about thing this week. The creator of The Crazy Frog has said, and I quote, 
I would never have it on my phone. If it came on the television, I would turn it off. Even before it went on the website, I began to hate myself. He added, bing, 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 bing. Two more to get. Come on, Dave. Is it um, anything to do with the fact that the postal uh, service have had the prices of stamps frozen? I mean, I'm not being unsympathetic, but why should they raise the price of stamps? Because what do the actual postal service do, right? All they do is they collect a letter from a box, right? They stick it in a sorting office, then somebody else takes it to a train station who takes it up north to Newcastle, and then another bloke picks that up from there, takes it to another sorting office, he'll then sort it out again, and then he'll give it to another man who gets on a bicycle and rides for four miles on his bike in the rain and delivers it to someone in the middle of nowhere, right? And they want 22p for that. <laughs> I was intrigued by this. I don't know if you saw this. That Tesco are now organ. You can get funerals at Tesco, which is fantastic, isn't it? Really. You can get funerals at Tesco. Oh, shop till you drop. Yeah. <laughs> what <are> you <laughs> oh. Uh, that's not one of the, uh, the five big talking points this week. I'll tell you what, we've got uh, two more to get. Fingers on buzzers. Buzz in if you think you know what the people have been talking about this week. Yeah, okay. Buzz. Sean? I think it has to be the uh, rejection of the European Constitution yeah. by the French and the Dutch. They've said no, non and ni. I mean, the great okay. thing is that now we don't have a referendum because has anybody any idea what you'd be voting for? I've it? got no idea yeah, at all. Does anybody yeah, have any idea? Yeah, it's selfish. You're voting about whether Liverpool should be in Europe next Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's have a look and see if the uh, European uh -huh. uh, vote was up there. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> well, no. uh, Rod Stewart is to be a dad again, uh, age 60. Obviously, when his kid has their 21st birthday, Rod will be dead. <laughs> Going out with one of her friends? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Dad, you come to my 21st, you bet your arse I am, yeah. <laughs> 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 the best age to have kids, though, 60s and 70s, isn't it, really? Because you've got, you've got to get up two or three times a night anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so long thought, no, that, that didn't, make, didn't make the list. Of Japanese uh, soldiers thought World War II was still going on. They emerged somewhere. Oh, yes. I can tell you, that was the eighth most talked about thing this week. Two Japanese servicemen have emerged from the jungle and are said to be shocked that the war is over. They were even more shocked when Ant and Dex said, let's have a look at some of your funniest moments. <laughs> You've got one more thing to get. It's, Richard. It's actually Cole, isn't it? Um, Tell me the story. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's committed the heinous crime of actually having a cup of tea with uh, some somebody from another club. For this, he's been fined £100,000. It wasn't the first time it happened as well, because he was tapped up by Newcastle as well, apparently, just before. Why does it matter? I mean... Well, that would never work, because you can't sell coal to the Geordies. <laughs> hey. Hey. Thank you. Hey. 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 Let's have a look if it's there. It is. <laughs> right, that's the end of the first round, and we've established that the British public talk more about animated ringtones than the European Constitution. Good on you. I can also tell you that Sean, Richard and Mel have uh, four points, and Dave, Simon and Lee have one point. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Dave, your team first. I can't tell you the source because it will give it away. 7% oh. of UK kids don't know what. Shit. <laughs> the correct way to prepare crack. If they eat another chocolate biscuit, they'll turn into a chocolate biscuit. <laughs> um, it, is, it is about um, food. What a carrot is. Very close. Yeah. Uh, what a carrot isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to have to give you this one. It's 7% of UK kids don't know how to eat an orange. Wow. What? In front of me. 7% of UK kids don't know how to eat an orange. Cover it in breadcrumbs and deep fry it. They'll get the hang of it. <laughs> To be fair, most kids get all the orangey goodness they need from Bacardi Breezes. <laughs> Sean's team, uh, this is from a study by Leicester University from March this year. On average, policemen spend two minutes per day what? Playing with their Nino. <laughs> um, arguing over who's going to be bad cop. <laughs> spend two minutes per day tampering with evidence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just for old times sake. <laughs> is it They're boiling a really soft egg? 
No, the answer is, in fact, on average, policemen spend two minutes per day taking statements. Dave, Simon and uh, Lee, this is from the Department of Health survey from last December. Southerners are five times more likely to what than Northerners? Support Manchester United. <laughs> Celebrate Pim's o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Book a flight from Gatwick. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's to do with an emergency. Five times more likely to not have an emergency. <laughs> it wasn't that much of a clue. <laughs> Call an ambulance. You're absolutely right. It is dial 999. Yeah. My neighbour had a heart attack, right, fell on his hamster, and the RSPCA got there before the ambulance. <laughs> Sean's team, you're next. Um, this is according to a survey by the Ramblers Association from this March. 69% of people think that encountering what would spoil their enjoyment of a country walk? Talking sheep. <laughs> Especially a really dull one. <laughs> if a sheep could talk, it'd be quite boring, wouldn't it? Yeah, he's just been standing here all day. Bloody <laughs> Over there yesterday. Great. <laughs> a badger the size of a horse. <laughs> that sounded really rude the way you said it. <laughs> oh, she had a badger the size of a horse. <laughs> I keep forgetting Richard Maley's there, and it's like a little surprise every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what would spoil a country walk? Come on, just think about it logically. A bull. The road. Oh, electric, electric pilot. Yeah, you're along no. the right. Motorway. Cars. Well, you're absolutely right. I'll give you that. It's vehicles. What? what? <laughs> Dave, um, your team. Uh, next one's from the British Attitude Survey, December 2004. By the year 2015, half the world's population will what? Have been evicted from the Big Brother house. <laughs> <laughs> will have had a go on Titmus. <laughs> I've read the Da Vinci Code. Reading the Da Vinci Code is kind of along the same lines. Well, they would be able to read the Da Vinci Code. Speaking English. You're absolutely right. Sean, yeah. yours is the next one from a survey by Surrey University, featured in the Daily Mail in March. 17% of British women are kept awake each night by what? 17% of British men. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Maidley. <laughs> yeah, they're there tossing and yeah. turning. Yeah. <laughs> is it ecstasy? <laughs> I think it's a gentle but insistent prodding in their lower backs. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's quite an obvious one. The children. Is it snoring? You are absolutely 100% oh. right. 17% of British women are kept awake by their partner snoring. If your partner does snore, one way you can deal with it is to gently roll them over. Do it three times, they're out the bed, problem solved. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's eight points for Sean's team and two points for Dave's team. <laughs> Sean. Well, I think it's a good chance to be talking about uh, Russell Crowe, oh, yeah. who's uh, in a hotel. He was a hotel in New York, trying to phone his son in Australia so he could say, Good night! <laughs> and, uh, I love you! <laughs> and the phone didn't work, so he took it downstairs and threw it at the night porter. Still didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> then he picks up a bowl of matches, chucks that at the night porter. Still didn't work. <laughs> you know the man is going to get a million pounds, maybe. He's suing for a million pounds. A million pounds? No, it's definitely worth I, it. <laughs> I'd like him to throw a phone at me. And while he's at it, he can whip me with a leather glove and spit on me. <laughs> and I'll give him a million pounds. <laughs> Well, let's have a look and see if Russell Crowe is up on our list of the most talked about things of the week. Oh. Yes, it is. 37% of people were talking about <laughs> Russell Crowe being in trouble again. If you do throw a phone at a hotel receptionist, the best way to get away with it is to say afterwards, it's for you. <laughs> Dave, your team. What else do you think the nation has been talking about this week? Um, well, I'd say Michael Jackson. The jury's out, of course, it's all happening, and um, he's ill again. A commentator said, I saw the colour drain from his face. I don't think so. <laughs> the defence, well, part of the defence is that he's just reliving his childhood. Get a few mates round, get in bed, open a bottle of wine, watch some gay porn. He doesn't call it wine, though, does he? Jesus juice. Jesus juice. That's what we call it, isn't it? <laughs> they like it when I'm rude to Jimmy. But he said, didn't he, he said that um, if he gets acquitted, he's very tempted to leave America now. Go to Africa and, and attain some sort of anonymity. <laughs> or just blend in. Yeah. just blend in. <laughs> May I suggest Finland? Maybe, I don't know. 
Are you allowed to wear wigs in prison? I presume that you're not allowed to wear wigs in prison. That's going to be hard for him. I, I don't know whether the wig's going to be the most difficult thing about being in prison. <laughs> My hair looks rubbish, and stop that while you're at it. <laughs> Just put cameras all over the prison and call it, I'm a Michael Jackson, get me out of here. <laughs> but unfortunately, he can't go, I'm Michael Jackson, get me out of here. They go, no, sorry, you're Michael Jackson, that's why you're in here. <laughs> Well, let's have a look and see if Michael Jackson is on our list. <laughs> yes, it is. It's the most talked about thing this week. 59% of people were talking about the Michael Jackson trial. The court proceedings were further delayed this week because Jackson kept nipping to the little boy's room. Not the best choice of words. <laughs> um, surely the men would have spotted the, um, the orgasm story this week. Did you see that? In the yeah. jeans, in women's jeans. That well, was brilliant. It's a fantastic story because uh, scientists have now proved that um, women's orgasms are, are all in their genes, which is great for us, because um, not that I have a problem, but, um, <laughs> but, but it's, it, if I had a problem, it wouldn't be my fault. No, no, no. I could say... <laughs> what if you're not wearing jeans? <laughs> oh, jeans! <laughs> Everything Tara says is funny. <laughs> That would be one of those what-are-they-talking-about-down-the-pub stories, I would say. I think the very fact they're in the pub, they're not really bothered about women's orgasms. We <laughs> <laughs> didn't make our list of the top five most talked about things. A scientific study has revealed that the ability to orgasm is hereditary. It means that grandmothers have the same orgasmic response as their granddaughters. Oh! This is according to research done by <laughs> Professor Wayne Rooney. Fingers on buzzers if you know what people have been talking about this week. <laughs> um, is it... Uh, are people just going, you know, uh, Bush, Bush and Blair? Blair's been using his special relationship with George Bush, which is, uh, I suppose, like the same sort of relationship a tree has with a dog, <laughs> uh, uh, to, be, to try and persuade him to give some more money to debt relief, Bob Geldof's debt relief thing, yeah. and George Bush has just gone, nah. <laughs> he won't even do anything about uh, climate change, will he, Bush? He won't do any. He won't uh, sign up to Kyoto, the Kyoto Agreement. I think he recycled his copy of the agreement. That's something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know why on, on Kyoto that we also discovered this week was that a White House official had been doctoring uh, government reports on climate change to water down the scientific evidence. Oh, he's gone quite newsy, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether we should have had someone this clever on the show. <laughs> Well, should you saying about it? Because I know about you, I mean, I recycle stuff, you know. And, and you go to America, you do think to yourself, what is the point? Why do I even bother? You know? and, and, like, you know, you think to yourself, you're washing out a Marmite pot and they're drilling for oil in Alaska. They're <laughs> greedy, selfish, ignorant bastards. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just... How <laughs> about, about you? Next time a hurricane hits Florida, I'm going to go, no! <laughs> <laughs> and if Clarkson's on holiday, bingo! <laughs> Well, let's have a look if uh, Bush and Blair uh, talking has been in the news. Yeah. Well done. Uh... What else are people doing? I think it's uh, Bob Geldof and his uh, G8 plans. He that wants is in the news. all these sailors from the south coast to sail across to France. Sail across to France and bring back 10,000 French people. And, and if you sent all these boats out from England with all these little sailors in, they'd just come back with 30 crates of Stella, wouldn't they? <laughs> 30 crates of Stella, 500 fags. It's for an 18th. All right. Do we know who's playing in the gig? Who's playing? Are you going to do a bit? Yeah, I'm on just after Sting, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tara, are you doing a little bit? Live 8? Um, do a little bit. Are you? Pass <laughs> <laughs> it on. She's parlayed that across. <laughs> Have you got any black artists on the bill at all? There's one, I think. Yusuf Ndour is on. Mm -hmm. Yusuf Ndour, but he's in Paris, isn't he? And Edinburgh. He's, right. he's pretty big, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Would it be wrong to get Sting to black up? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say that I've noticed something? What? The, you're, you're sitting on a silk cushion. I know, with you're tassels. like Charles. <laughs> come on, let's just, let's just have a look at this. Come on, come on, look at this. <laughs> The rest of the show having lost a foot. <laughs> I like, I enjoyed the 8 out of 10 cats, Channel 4, but I you noticed know Jimmy what? got a lot shorter <laughs> during the first round. Come on, shush. Come on. Oh, I'm a martyr to my piles. You're doing very well. 
Okay, now just read what it says there, you'll be fine. <laughs> Right, let's have a look and see if Live 8 was in our most talked about things. Come on. Oh, what's yeah. 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 Yes, it was number three last week, but it's gone up to number two this week. Bob Geldof has urged people to recreate the Dunkirk spirit by collecting people from France in their boats. The Germans have pledged to do their bit by bombing the beaches. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one more to get. Come on, have a go. Is it the fact that the government wants to charge us all now um, for every mile that we drive? Really? in our cars and that's their big new idea <laughs> which funnily enough they only announced two weeks after being re-elected but never mentioned it beforehand mm. uh, before the election it's never going to work is it i mean have you got, has anybody got sat now because you've got past a few trees and it's lost them hasn't it it's lost the satellite altogether no what car are you driving <laughs> <laughs> right let's have a look and see if the road charge is one of the most talked about things this week oh The government are looking at a system to measure how far we drive so they can charge us accordingly. Isn't that petrol? <laughs> so at the end of that round, uh, Sean's team have two points and Dave's team have three points. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Dave, David and Krishnan, 10% of British men lie about what at school reunions? What school they went to? So 10% of British men lie about... Well, maybe there's no word there, it's just lie about at yeah. your room. <laughs> <laughs> you lie about men who first had sex. If they had sex. I th I'm going to give you that. Yeah. At school reunions, 10% of British men lie about the number of sexual partners they've had. I lied about mine, I, I rounded the number up to one. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Sean, Tara and Christian, uh, this is from yeah. a poll by Churchill Insurance from January of this year. Okay. Uh, women spend, on average, £100,000 on what during their lifetime? Is it women spend an average of £100,000 on, judging from the tampon adverts, is it skydiving and rollerblading lessons? <laughs> you really understand women, don't you? Of course I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The women I've gone out with, it's not rent. <laughs> Right. You've been hurt, haven't you? Oh, God. <laughs> Botox? <laughs> uh, I can still frown, by the way. Is it, um... Go on, have a fr yeah, frown. Botox. A frown? Is that, that's frowning, is it? <laughs> I... There's nothing from there up. <laughs> well, exactly, so Botox. It's the average woman, not the average socialite. <laughs> I know, clothes. Yes. <laughs> Dave's team next. Uh, this is from last June. 44% of American dads say that what features in their sex lives? Jacko. <laughs> <laughs> the letters WWW. <laughs> <laughs> is it being bummed in the woods by hillbillies? <laughs> <laughs> it's smutty, this no. show, isn't it? <laughs> I shall tell you this, because it's quite difficult to get. 44% of American dads say that religion features in their sex lives. Sean, this is according to a survey featured in The Mirror in April. The popularity of what has increased by 26% in the last three years? A bird flu. <laughs> You're half right. I thought it was going to be something like Gary Glitter. You know, because about three years ago, you know, I said, what do you think of Gary Glitter? People we were going, oh, I don't like him. Whereas now, they go, oh, not really. So that's more popular, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah think I can see that theory Things working. have got slightly better for him. Oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> you know, they've, they've started playing his music again. What if Jackson, if Jackson gets done, will they stop playing his music? Radio 2 have uh, said they're going to. They're going to carry on playing it, even if No, 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 if he gets put away, no more Jacko five really? songs. Yeah. No, it's a shame <laughs> Phil Collins is such a law-abiding <laughs> citizen. <isn't it? laughs> I have to tell you this, the popularity of bird watching has increased by 26% oh. oh. in the last three years. Most ornithologists agree, those birds are definitely up to something. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, it's five points for Sean's team and six points for Dave's team. Oh, Dave. Well, I'm going out on a limb here, and it's an American thing, I don't know if you saw it. Michael Jackson. <laughs> Michael who, sir? 
Michael Jackson, the uh, pop singer, was acquitted of all charges. They said the defence was very good, very strong. They blamed it on the sunshine, blamed it on the moonlight. <laughs> On the boogie. Um, there's a lot of speculation, though, isn't there? Uh, uh, where does he go from here? Where's his future lie? And there is speculation that he's coming to England and he's made for Panto, the guy. Isn't he? <laughs> well, he actually is. It's all furry tales, it's all Never Never Land, it's all that. He's made for Panto. Small part in Aladdin would suit him, just to get him. Genie <laughs> right. of the Ring, maybe. He's behind you! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> but I don't you think when he said he said no more boys in my bed that's quite an astonishing you don't you very rarely in your life you ever need to say that sentence again <laughs> it's a bit like it's a bit like somebody's got off like a, a bank robbery charge going I'll tell you what I won't be hanging around the town centre with a shotgun and a balaclava anymore <laughs> did, you, did you see in, when they were saying that uh, is Michael Jackson wearing a wig I'm afraid when you've got a face like that does it matter <laughs> <laughs> A bad wig, hardly going to spoil the look. <laughs> Maybe when he got home, he just went, oh, thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon about his wife, though, Debbie Rowe? When she's... That's just so weird, the trial. I mean, when she went in, they went, oh, he's a great father, what a role model. Did you get the impression that the real Debbie Rowe was, like, locked in a cupboard going... <laughs> <laughs> Down to seven stone during the trial, which is actually lighter than most kids. To be fair, not American kids. No. Yeah. <laughs> Eamon, what, what do you think's next for Michael Jackson? Some sort of job on GMTV, maybe? <laughs> Leave this one going. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Little Michael on the sofa. He's got a new single. <laughs> he should bring out a single called No More Boys in Bed. Yeah. <laughs> no More Boys in Bed! And then he's had loads of old men in his bed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see where Michael Jackson yes. came in terms of the most talked about things this week. Yes. Well, what a surprise. The most talked about thing this week was the Michael Jackson trial. Almost 94% of people were talking about Michael Jackson. Most were saying, hang on, sorry, it's a terrible line. Did you say not guilty? <laughs> A lot of people think the case was about race. Typical, the rich white guy always gets off. <laughs> Sean, over to you. What do you think people have been talking about this week? What about uh, Mike Tyson giving up boxing to become a wedding planner? Would you get most of your news from Take a Break magazine? <laughs> <laughs> you know, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Do you know when they reported it to Evander Olifield? They went to him and said, Tyson's given up. He went, no. They said, yeah, he's actually given up. And he went, I can't believe me here. <laughs> I can tell you it wasn't in the top five, it was the 19th most talked about oh. thing this week. Mike Tyson has announced this week that he wants to quit boxing. He said that he wants to become a Christian missionary, uh, though when asked to make the sign of the cross, he said... <laughs> um, right, Dave, Lee and Eamon, what have people been talking about this week? Is it, is it the honours list? Yeah, it is the honours list. I woke up last week and it said, genial Irish breakfast host made a <laughs> sir. <laughs> downhill after that. What did Brian May get his for, do we know? Services to Anita Dobson. <laughs> I used to like it when normal people got OBEs. Remember, like, you know, lollipop ladies and, like, toilet no, attendants? Didn't. That was nice, weren't it? Because you imagine it really going to the red light. Sheila, that toilet's blocked. Dame <laughs> Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot more Rod Hull, the toilet cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> toilet stop. Sean, who would you give an honour to? Michelle McManus, make her a dame. Thank you! <laughs> Am I being thick here? Who's Michelle McManus? Yeah. She won Pop Idol. She's an enormous whale of a girl. Oh, the big... <laughs> oh. She's lost six stone. She's doing... Lost very... six stone? That's like throwing a deck chair off the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> She's lost six stone. She's taken a dump. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have a look if the Queen's Honours is one of our most talked about things. Oh, yes. Yes, this week the Queen's birthday honours were announced. Of course, the Queen has two birthdays a year, which goes some way towards explaining why she looks so old. <laughs> OK, you've got three more to get. Fingers on buzzers. Prince Harry at Sandhurst. 
Yeah, so this is the story of a Sun journalist breaking into Sandhurst with a fake bomb. So the thing is, they're, they're always doing this, aren't they? The, the tabloids, the Sun and the Mirror, they're, they're constantly like, you know, trying to breach security arrangements. And I imagine every time Al Qaeda read it, they just go, Ah, oh, I wish we'd thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Claudia, are you worried about Harry's safety? Uh, yes. I, I was undecided. <laughs> it was 50. Well, yes, a little. Well, I think. You haven't thought about it, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> You said it's a, it's like a fake bomb in there, which basically is anything, isn't it? You know, a brush is a fake bomb, isn't it? <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if this was one of the most talked about things this week. Ooh. Oh, yes. Yes, it was. This is the story of a Sun journalist who smuggled a fake bomb into Sandhurst. Harry was initially excited. He thought they'd smuggled in a bong. <laughs> Is it uh, the story about uh, people trying to, to sell uh, the ticket touts trying to sell on eBay the Live Eight tickets? Because yeah. I was disgusted by that, as everybody was. What did you bid? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, I wouldn't bid, honestly. I, would, I was disgusted. Like, it, Bob Geldof said boycott it for a week, but they backtracked, so I didn't bother. But at one point, I was going to get me snuff movies and me ivory chess set from somewhere else. In there. <laughs> <laughs> when you say snuff movie, it's some old bloke going. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Just going, bloody weather. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether the Live 8 eBay ticket fiasco was one of our most talked about stories. Oh, yes. Yes. It was the second most talked about thing this week. You've got one more to guess. Is it by any chance the world debt? The fact Tell that me they're going to well, they're going to reduce the world debt. Uh, the Western world is going to reduce the uh, African debt, and it's going to work out to about a pound per person per year, right? Which I thought, that's quite good, isn't it? Pound. I'm quite happy to give that to solve. But then they said, for ten years. I was thinking, <laughs> that's ten pounds, isn't it? <laughs> oh, how tight are the northerns? Oh. <laughs> how pompous are the southerners? <laughs> Not very pompous at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we have a look and see whether the uh, debt cancellation is one of our top five talk Let's about stories? Oh. <laughs> yes, I can tell you that the G8 leaders have pledged to drop $40 billion worth of debt. Well, they haven't actually cancelled the debt. What they've done is they've consolidated it into one easy monthly payment. <laughs> Rwanda gets a charming carriage clock. <laughs> and don't worry, Chad, no salesman will call. <laughs> At the end of that round, Sean, Allen, and Claudia have no points, and Dave, Lee, and Eamon have five points. Uh. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world, and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Question number one. This is from a survey by Mother and Baby magazine from June 2005. 50% of British dads are what? Counting the days till the kids leave home. <laughs> are your kids going to be watching this? <laughs> Is it 50% of British dads are uh, crap at putting shelves up? <laughs> as I am. Just open it. My wife said, put some shelves up, and I went, no, you want them straight and everything. I know you're... I... <laughs> I'm not proud of this. I went to the library to get a DIY boot, and I said to the one behind the counter, I said, have you got any boots on shelves? She went... <laughs> Is it 50% uh, of dads are suing Jurex? <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily Jurex, it could be any of the rubber Johnny manufacturers. <laughs> there's, a new, there's a new promotion for it, I don't know if you've seen it in the chemist at the moment. It's a brand new promotion, it's uh, for condoms and it says, No, new shape. What new shape? <laughs> <laughs> is that for because it's Sellafield? <laughs> I'll give you a clue, it's something to do with uh, having babies. Tired, <laughs> sleepy. Claudia, you said sleepy. Sleep, tired, exhausted. I'm going to give you a point. It is, in fact, 50% of British dads are sleep deprived. <laughs> well, they have to wake up three times a night to tell their wives, it's crying again. <laughs> Sean's team, uh, this is from research carried out by the Department of Psychology at the University of Texas from June this year. Men consistently find women with what the most attractive? Is it Rod Stewart? <laughs> He's often got a charming young lady on his arm. <laughs> <laughs> Big tits, low self-esteem. <laughs> Is it GPS? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
global satellite yeah. positioning. Um, is it with a naked twin sister? That would get a thumbs up, wouldn't it? Yeah, so more than a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I don't a think degree. Gonna... A degree? Yeah. Oh, so naive. <laughs> <laughs> no teeth. <laughs> no, men consistently find women with a weight to height ratio of between 0.68 and 0.8 oh. the most attractive. I was going to say that. Oh. <laughs> that roughly translates as not the stocky ones. <laughs> Dave, Eamon and Lee, uh, this next one is from a poll by the Health Development Agency from January this year. 60% of drivers think what is a good idea? Oh, uh, those chevrons on the motorway. Have you seen those? It's a road safety thing. You've got to keep two chevrons from the car in front. Yeah. And I, it's, it's not, it's wrong. Why? I nearly killed myself trying to keep up with a Porsche last week. <laughs> it's got 150 and I'm like, this can't be right, this can't be safe. <laughs> Is it 60% of drivers think that driving with your knees whilst eating against us pasty? <laughs> it's the only way to do it. <laughs> one underneath, one to cup for the small bits of potato. <laughs> I'm not wasting that, I'd rather risk my life. <laughs> is it... No. Is it... Is it, is it uh, playing lullabies and having a pillow? <laughs> is it driving past a little chef? <laughs> Is it 60% of drivers think uh, that kids doing that thumbs up thing is okay because it gets right on my bloody nerve? When you're driving behind a car and kids like that. <laughs> <laughs> I do that, I go like that. <laughs> Show your mum. <laughs> okay, I can tell you it's something that um, it's something that you would expect drivers not to like. Speed cameras. Eamon, you're brilliant, you got it. That doesn't <laughs> Every week there seems to be another statistic. I mean, I don't know, you saw like 63% of kids now of underage sex, yet last month 72 were obese. So who's shagging these fat kids? <laughs> <laughs> no, so at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean's team have two points and Dave's team are in the lead with seven. <laughs> Sean, what have people been talking about? Well, personally, I, I think I've lost count this week the number of times people have, mostly strangers, have turned to me and said, uh, oh, you're hot, isn't it? <laughs> oh, right. oh, brilliant. Oh, I'm so oh. hot. And I think, yeah, I know. I'm standing next to you. <laughs> in fact, that's the only thing we've got in common. <laughs> We're hot. <laughs> I mean, I said, I think to myself, like, if they said, look, eagle, I'd be interested. <laughs> There goes Vinnie Jones on a penny farthing. <laughs> then they go, oh, are you, oh, I'm very, are you close? Do you find it close? No, I find you a bit close. <laughs> I like the fact it makes the world a bit of a friendlier place. Because you've all got a conversation to have. Well, yeah, it's not a conversation, is it? You go, it's hot, and they go, yeah, it yeah. is, isn't it? That's it. See ya. <laughs> right, no, that, that's all the conversation I want with my dry cleaner. <laughs> I don't want them to go, uh, Tolstoy, do you think he's overrated? <laughs> You can't, it doesn't go anywhere, the hot thing, does it? It just goes, you're hot, yeah, hot. Yeah. You, can't, you can't go, no, I'm not hot, I'm a robot. Yes. <laughs> Atmospheric conditions don't affect me. <laughs> I think robots would be more prone to the heat, actually. Really? Yeah. Well, metal, metal conducts heat. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot, isn't it? <laughs> yes. You're right, you're right, actually, yeah, I'm, I feel, I'm totally so ashamed of myself. Yeah, there's probably loads of robots out there going, bloody boiling, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, is it me? <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if the weather was one of the most talked about things this week. Oh. Yes, it was. Oh. It was the most talked about thing in the last week. We've all been talking about how hot June is. <laughs> it's been so hot, some pensioners have even been taking off their cardies. <laughs> Dave, Sue, Paul, what have people been talking about? Well, week? Wimbledon's back, isn't it? I mean, Tim Edmonds out, thank God. Yeah. I'm sorry, you know, I'm sure he's a very good, I'm sure he's a nice bloke, I'm sure he can play tennis and all that, but I just can't, you can't watch him for all that. Come on, Tim! <laughs> Come on, Tim! Is it some, there's some sort of competition going on and, 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 and he'll get the ball and he'll pick it up. Come on, Tim, you can do it! No, he can't. No, he can't. No, he can't. <laughs> his grandfather was a tennis player, his grandmother was the first woman to serve overhand at Wimbledon. What, his grandma? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Slut. <laughs> Complaining about the women grunting. 
Oh, aren't they? Yeah. And I always say, a grunt is better than a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the grunting thing they're just going to try and ban it because they say, like, they might be trying to put people off? Because if you can listen to occasionally, they go, loser! <laughs> I'd like, to see it, I'd like to see it go to other sports like snooker, and they just go... Somebody said that um, Sharapova's grunt was louder than a petrol-powered lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> if she makes that much noise hitting a tennis ball, oh. how much noise would she make if she was... I know she probably won't ever have to shift pianos, but... <laughs> She's not going to be at the top forever. No. <laughs> <laughs> she sounds... I've heard lorry drivers in cubicles at service stations making less noise than that. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Wimbledon is one of the top five most talked about things this week. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yeah. it is. Yes, Tim Henman went out of Wimbledon yesterday. It's the time of year when everyone says how rubbish he is. Yeah, he's ninth in the world. That's ninth out of six billion. <laughs> it's not bad. At least he's in it. You can't even work the interactive coverage. <laughs> Sean, what else have people been talking about this week? Tom Cruise being squirted. By some pranksters. Really funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> From Channel 4, actually. Channel 4, yeah. Yeah. What do you think they've got next on the list? That, they thought that was funny. They've got, like, bumming David Blunkett's dog. Oh. <laughs> if they put it on TV, I'd watch yeah, it. That's all I'm I saying. <laughs> well, I bet they wouldn't have done it if it was Jackie Chan, would yeah. they? No. <laughs> yeah. Jackie Chan's on the red carpet. They go... <laughs> <laughs> Russell Crowe. Russell yeah. Crowe. Somebody with a sense of humour. Yeah. Something like that, you know. <laughs> You see why it's funny, Russell? It's put that down. Put that down. No. <laughs> you did a lot of this kind of caper with Dennis Pennis. Did you ever get anyone getting shirty or lawsuits or anything? Russell Grant. Russell Grant. <laughs> so you went for the big target. I went yeah. for the big boy. Yeah. He was at the height of his powers then. <laughs> <laughs> what did you, you say to him? I asked him if he could read palms. He said, "Of course I can." So I said, "What's that?" Say? I said, "Off you fat." <laughs> <laughs> He loved it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's have a look if Tom Cruise is in the top five most talked about things. Hey. Yeah. Yes. This week, Tom Cruise was hit in the face by a jet of water as part of a TV comedy show. Channel 4 said the incident was not intended to cause offence and was very much in the spirit of fun. They sent flowers to apologise. Well, one flower, and said, you've got to smell it right up close. <laughs> Tom Cruise last week proposed to Katie Holmes. He said, will you marry me? She said, you had me at I'm a billionaire. <laughs> Dave, what else have people been talking about? You've got two more to get. Um, I'll just go for um, a million fat kids in the country. <laughs> fat parents have fat kids, and that's what happens, you know. <laughs> and I was in this pub, and they just come in as a family, like there's mum and dad in Chantelle Demy. <laughs> He's at the bar, ordering the food, shouting across the pub to, Doreen, what are you having? I'll have them knuckles. <laughs> and that goes with cheese, then I'll have that all day breakfast, mega breakfast. I'll have that, then Baywell tart and custard. Onion rings, don't forget, bag of chips, don't worry, yeah. <laughs> what you having drink? Oh, Diet Coke. I <laughs> know. <laughs> this, this bloke shouted over and said, Any more of this diet indoor, you'll go down plug all. <laughs> I said she won't go down a pissing man <laughs> We've got a third of Europe's fat kids. Yeah. <laughs> England! <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that the story wasn't one of the most talked about things oh, this week. Oh. Um, but yes, there was a story that there are one million obese children in Britain today. Do you realise that if they all jumped up and down at the same time, they might just lose some weight? <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. What else have people been talking about? Is it the smoking? Is they, they're finalising the smoking bill. Yeah. And they're deciding what is what considers to be a public place. For example, they're saying a bus stop is a public place you can't smoke there. So I think, what am I going to do for two hours then? <laughs> and, um... <laughs> I, th I think for kids, they're trying to raise the age, though, aren't they, as well, to 18. So they're not allowed to buy knives at 16. They can't wear hoods. How are they going to look hard? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the smoking ban is one of our top five stories. Yeah. Yes, it is. The fourth most talked about thing this week. The new legislation bans smokers from lighting up in pubs. Some say it's just another example of the nanny state. A government spokesman said, I think someone's overtired. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, you've got one more thing to get. Is it this, uh, the fiasco that was the American Grand Prix where um, none of them would race because they've got the wrong tyres on? <laughs> 200,000 Americans just watched six of them go round. <laughs> and Schumacher won. In what way is that different from normal Grand Prix? <laughs> well, more of them. Oh, right. Schumacher said, though, he was, he was in his very dry German way, he said, uh, yeah, they're throwing things on track, water, and by the smell of it, some beer. <laughs> <laughs> How fast is he going so he can smell the beer on the way round? <laughs> Well, let's have a look and see if the Formula One fiasco is in the top five talked about things. Well, 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 yes, it is. Yes, because of a problem with the tyres, only six cars raced in the American Grand Prix. It's the first time in history that Formula One has genuinely resembled scale electric. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, June and Peter have three points and Dave, Paul and Sue have two points. The next round is called The Pole with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world, and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. OK, Sean Steen, you are first. 80% of Daily Mail readers don't like what? Um, reggae. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like anything, do they? If they had their way, one end of the Channel Tunnel would be a big cheese grater, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> The glut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <sure>. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you immediately gave it a name in French. Did I? Yeah, you <laughs> oh, Do you know no, why I thought, I thought that and didn't say it, but I, obviously I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it people whose houses are on wheels? <laughs> <laughs> and who like to move about a bit? <laughs> Settle down for a couple of weeks, burn a few tyres and then move on. <laughs> I don't like the way that George Eliot's Mill on the Floss ended. I found it a little downbeat. <laughs> it's something rude. Gay sex? No, no uh, it, it... gag balls. <laughs> <laughs> Rimming a chimp. They don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Where might they see sex? On Maybe the telly. Everywhere. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> 80% of Daily Mail readers don't like sex on TV. If you're a Daily Mail reader, look away now. <laughs> That's actually quite erotic. Yeah. <laughs> OK, I can't tell you the source of this one, Dave's team, because uh, it would give it away. 80% of doctors are in favour of what? Kissing it better. <laughs> <laughs> Is it working from home? 80% of doctors are in favour of Dr Fox being struck off. <laughs> Is it acupuncture? Only I've had it and it works, you know, it's good. But I always wonder, oh, did they ever, ever get that past the medical council that's sticking pins in you? Would... And how did it ever, ever come about? Was it two samurai warriors centuries ago going, ching, 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 uh, ah! Oh, my headache's gone. <laughs> <laughs> do you know if it goes on, do you have to use an acupuncture repair kit? <laughs> it's 80% of doctors are in favour of chloramphenicol for red eye in children. <laughs> This is from a survey that featured in the Daily Express in December 2004. 50% of people can't explain what what is. Is it Kamal from Big Brother? <laughs> Silit bang. <laughs> what is Silit bang? What? 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 Sad enough, I found it in yeah. the bathroom the other day. I'm reading it because I'm on the toilet. And uh, what well, you do, don't you? I've done the bleach, I've done the sif. Um, Silit bang, and there's no ingredients on it. It's very Moorish. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. Something to do with finance. Bank. Yeah, a bank. <laughs> yeah, seriously. What's a bank? What is a bank? Yeah. My, my friend said to me, what, what's a building society? He said, I don't know what a building society is. And I said, what's a bank? I don't know what a bank is. I don't know what it is. What is it? You, 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 they, they say that they've got your money, you know, and... And then you go in and they give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not really as easy as that sometimes, yeah. you know, they make it difficult for you, you know, and, and, and they give you interest and they, but somehow, like, they invest your money I in things and... <laughs> I, I, I feel like, Peter, it. you're auditioning for the thickest man in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I tell you? Yeah. 50% yeah. of people can't explain what an overdraft is. I'll tell you what, give me your PIN number and I'll show you. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, it's uh, five points for Sean's team and five points for Dave's team. Yay! What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what they've been talking about this week. 
It's our panellists' job to guess the nation's top five most popular talking points. Uh, Dave, your team to go first. What do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Is it the identity card bollocks scheme? <laughs> <laughs> ID scheme bollocks, yes. It's an immediate reaction originally to combat terrorism, and because uh, that's going to work, isn't it, obviously? If you need an ID card, it's going to wipe it out completely. Yeah. <laughs> Suicide bomber leaving home, locking the front door. Don't know why he's locking it, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, have I got everything? Semtex, got the detonator, right? Uh, got the map, got the car keys. Oh, shit! The identity card! <laughs> <laughs> the, the way you get one is to go and prove your identity like that and you take a passport or a birth certificate. Yeah. The two most regularly forged documents in the world. Yeah. <laughs> I think the most documents are simple. Everyone should have a catchphrase. You know, <laughs> you know it's just like, it's only me. Come in, Mr. Enfield. You know? <laughs> Everyone has a little Tim Enman. Out. Yes, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what would your catchphrase be? I think I've almost sort of got one. I, I say, well done you, an awful lot. Well sort of catch myself going, well oh, done you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't quite know why. Slightly patronising that, isn't Yeah, it? a little yeah. bit, yeah. Well done, you. Off the cop. Yeah. <laughs> You've noticed that, Sean. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, should we have a look and see if ID cards are one of the top five most talked about things yeah. this week? Oh. Oh. Yes, they were. They were the most talked about oh, things. Sean, over to you. What do you think the nation has been talking about this week? Well, I think, uh, I think people are getting very excited about the Live 8 concerts in Hyde Park. I think people are getting very excited. If anyone's lucky enough to have tickets for it, don't go to the toilet when Dido's on, because there'll be massive queues. <laughs> 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 but the thing I didn't know was that you know, there's, I know there's gigs going all over the, all over the world, but the, all the African artists are doing this special gig in Cornwall. <laughs> I thought, there's a lot of African people in this country. I don't think one of them lives in frigging <laughs> Cornwall. <laughs> I don't like to see the instructions they get. You get to Heathrow, come out of the airport, turn left, and just keep going for about seven hours. <laughs> Don't get stuck behind a caravan, you'll never make it. <laughs> Bob Geldof said, he said, uh, he said, I'm not putting African artists on the bill in Hyde Park, he said, because I think people will switch off. And I think it shows he's got a very low opinion of us. What does he think? Like, an African artist comes on, I go, oh, bollocks, it's an African. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I tell world's maddest waiters on ITV. I'm not watching that. <laughs> it's, really, it's really odd, though, how saving the world makes you look like hell, because he looks terrible. <laughs> Doesn't he? Yeah. You think, you know, growing green grass and saving starving people would make you look pretty or better or something. <laughs> but the more he saves the world, the more he looks like Satan. <laughs> the G8 protests start next week. And they're all the... It's basically, G8 protests are like Christmas for anarchists, aren't they? That's when they get really... <laughs> Woo-hoo! <laughs> yeah, we chuck stuff at the police. <laughs> they get very excited about that. That's all going to start next week. So is that different to Live 8, G8? Yeah. Shit, I've got tickets for that. <laughs> 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 what do you think, Deborah? Are you going to go? Uh, no, I'm not going to go. I will have it on if I'm allowed. Because what do you mean usually, if you're allowed? well, usually I'm not allowed to put anything that I want on. It's got to be Thomas the Tank Engine. Or oh. <laughs> is your partner a bit slow? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's two and a half. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if Live Eight is one of the most talked about things this week. Yeah. Oh, well. One of the highlights of the Live Aid concert is set to be Sting singing Every Breath You Take, a song originally written about how much he misses the notorious B.I.G. <laughs> With such an impressive musical lineup, it is easy to lose sight of what the concert's really about, starving Africans. It is a serious problem. But then again, they don't get our winters. <laughs> Dave, over to you. What else have people been talking about this week? I was going to say, on a musical theme again, I think people probably were talking quite a lot about Glastonbury. I want to know why everybody I know that lives in Glastonbury calls it Glastonbury, and everybody who doesn't live in Glastonbury who goes there calls it Glastonbury. Because they're not as posh? Perhaps. <laughs> I'm beginning to think that might be the reason. <laughs> don't, don't some people call it Glastonbury? Glastonbury. <laughs> what, you mean the staff? Yes, yeah, the staff. Yeah. They're sweeping the fields. <laughs> Should we have a look and see whether Glastonbury is one of the most talked about things? Please, let's... Yeah. Oh, yes! <laughs> yes, it was. Glastonbury was the second most talked about thing this week. Kate Moss almost got E. coli and dysentery from the disgusting toilets. That was before she left Pete Doherty's flat and went to the festival. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, over to you. What else have people been talking about? There was a big, uh, big thing in the papers, wasn't there, about the Diana's, some new book about Diana's come out. 
The woman who's written the book was Diana's astrologist, right? No, I'm sorry, guys. She wasn't an astrologer. She was an energy healer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Electrician. <laughs> Let's see if that was one of the most talked about things. Oh. Yes, it was the fifth most talked about thing this week. Just think, though, if Diana hadn't died, we wouldn't have that beautiful fountain in Kensington Gardens. And Paris wouldn't have that beautiful slow down sign. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, you've got one more to get. Fingers on buzzers. Is it the, uh, the, the celebrations of the Battle of Trafalgar? And they had a big uh, flotilla. Armada type thing in, uh, in the Solent. <laughs> but the thing about it, I suppose, the thing that everyone noticed was that to, to not offend the French, they decided to, rather than have it between the English and the French, they had the blue team and the red team. <laughs> the idea was that so they don't offend the French, no. and it's I think it's a wasted opportunity to offend them. <laughs> 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 Wonderful opportunity to offend them because because the French they like being offended. All their facial muscles are designed to be offended. <laughs> <laughs> when the battle finished, half of our boats came back with 50 cases of Stella, didn't they? <laughs> well, I can tell you that the Battle of Trafalgar was not one of the most talked about things. It was actually the seventh most talked about thing this week. Uh, this week saw the reenactment of the Battle of Trafalgar to celebrate its 200-year anniversary. The reenactment wasn't a total success, and I'm sad to report the French have taken Plymouth. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I reckon it could be Big Brother. What does anyone else think? I don't know. I've been a, bit, been a bit busy this week, smashing myself in the head with an iron. So <laughs> I didn't get a chance to catch most of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I lie, actually. I've been entrapped by it this week because it's got very, very, very tetchy, doesn't it? But they don't show enough. They show those two, that, that straight couple in bed rolling around under that duvet, but I don't, you, don't get to see, you just see them like, you see lumps moving up and down. No, I, there's I want more it. detail. Oh, really? There was an elbow going. Oh, right. Is that what that was? Yeah. I was watching very closely indeed. It's like the porn you get in an Orkney's hotel, isn't it? <laughs> porn channel, just an elbow coming out of a duvet. <laughs> £7.99 for this. <laughs> I don't understand why everyone seems to fancy Maxwell so much. He's got no top lip. Yeah. He's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Right, should we have a look and see whether Big Brother was one of the most talked about things this week? Yes, well done. Well done. Yes, it was. It's all heating up in the Big Brother house. Saskia and Maxwell were both up for eviction this week. I'm not surprised. They behave like they're the new Posh and Becks. In fact, they're the new Stuart and Michelle. Remember them? They were the new Paul and Helen. <laughs> right, well, that's the end of that round. I can tell you that Dave's team have two points and Sean's have three points. The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. This is from a Harris Poll, August 1999. 13% of Americans are afraid of what? Their own shadow. Because <laughs> it'll be massive, won't it? Yeah, <laughs> Jesus, what's... Oh, it's me. <laughs> Have you been to America? Yeah. Did you, did you like it? No. Uh. <laughs> but no, it, I think Americans are really afraid of... Uh... If you can't say it, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> is it making love to a woman, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> is it? Is it? Of course. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, ha I have, uh, you know, I've been with a woman. Yeah, I well, just... I've done loads of blokes. Oh, hang on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you're trying to say is that 13% um, of Americans are afraid of Bush. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're afraid of going for a walk. <laughs> well, they, don't, they drive everywhere. The only time you see an American out of his car is he's chasing a donut going down a hill. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is feeling very anti-American to me, this whole part of Look, this. Scott, yeah. I have something to say. Scott, yeah. Think of it as friendly fire. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you were close with Bush, you were close with going for a walk. Going for a walk with the president. <laughs> the answer is 30% of Americans are afraid of being alone in a forest. <laughs> The other 87% are happily holed up in a log cabin with an M16 waiting for the federal government to fall. <laughs> OK. Only 7% of builders regularly what? Pull the pants up. <laughs> Only 7% of builders regularly shout, Oi, darling, I'd like to get to know you as a person. To you. <laughs> 
or say, stuff me, I finished a week early, I'll give you two grand back. <laughs> <laughs> Is it fall off ladders? Because they're thick as shit, aren't they? Some of them. <laughs> no, there should be a sign at the top of a ladder that says stop. Because it's... <laughs> it's kind of refreshment related. Come back from lunch. Turn up sober. <laughs> Only 7% of builders regularly take tea breaks. Oh, Most that's... prefer to add all their tea breaks together and turn up two weeks late. <laughs> <laughs> this is from a police review magazine survey from May 2005. 80% of British police want a what? Slap. <laughs> I don't know. A uh, friend? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know anybody who's got a friend who's a policeman. I've got an undercover friend. A, a friend who's an undercover policeman. Who is he? Well, he, he was. <laughs> what's he called? I can't say. because No, he's no, what's he called? He's undercover. No, no, but tell, tell us his name. Compton. Compton. Mr Compton. <laughs> What's it, where, where no, that's his other? first name. He's really cool as well. I shouldn't talk too much about him because he's, he's called Compton. Yeah, yeah, Compton. Because he's now kicking the telly. Going. Shut up. <laughs> he's he's really in a cool crack well. den. He's in a crack <laughs> den. They're watching this. And he's going. But then they go. You're Compton. <laughs> 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 Sorry. What are you doing? <laughs> Don't. Do no, I actually got a picture of him here. Right, there we go. <laughs> I've suddenly remembered. I've got a relation who's a copper, but he's he's a mounted copper. In oh. Canada. Really? Yeah. I he's think a, I know him. He's a... He's a... He's a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just got that. Sorry. <laughs> OK, 80% eight, of British police want a what? They want a bigger truncheon. It's sort of... You're along the right lines. A, a gun. A gun. Yeah, I'll give you that. It's a stun gun. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> OK, 62% of British men don't know their partner's what? A man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they don't know their partner's eye colour. That's a hard one to remember. I'm just trying to remember if my girlfriend's got eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd imagine no. <laughs> wow. Pin number. No, I'll give you a clue. It's, yeah, pin number, you're very close. Partner's... Phone number. Mobile phone number. Correct. Oh, oh. oh damn. Yes, yeah, 62% of British men don't know their partner's mobile telephone number. I don't need to know my girlfriend's <laughs> mobile number. She rings me every six minutes. <laughs> yes, I still love you. Blind bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's four points to Dave's team and five points to Sean's team. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with the leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the public's top five most popular talking points. I'll give you the number one story. It's obviously the London bombings. Uh, but what else have people been talking about this week? Sean, your team to go first. Well, I think they've almost definitely been talking about the release of the new Harry Potter novel. Uh, sold something like 10 million copies in an hour. And it's, it's not just kids that read it, it's adults. I saw a bloke on the train reading it the other day. And I did think to myself, I thought, well, I wonder if when he goes home, right, for his tea, he has alphabetic spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, dinosaur-shaped chicken bites. <laughs> and if he sees a woman in the pub, he fancies, he just runs over and punches her in the arm. <laughs> <laughs> I've read it. You've read it? Have you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, very, it's very good. Is it? Yeah, it's very exciting. It is a kid's book, but it yeah. makes it very easy to read. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't read any. And people say to me, they say, say like, what, you haven't read it? Like, I'm the weird one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't give a shit about wizards. Oh, what's that? <laughs> when I see the word wizard on a page, I do that. You know? It's just a natural reaction. But you clap. Not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love wizards. <laughs> well, they, they, they do that thing as well, the Harry Potter. They bring out, the, they have the cover for the kids' version, and then they have an adult cover as well, so you don't feel embarrassed reading. But it still says big letters, Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> Part of the reason I haven't read it is I haven't finished all the Mr Men books yet, and I don't, <laughs> I don't think I'm ready to make that leap. <laughs> it was four ninety nine in quicksave. Four pounds ninety nine. In quicksave? Oh, yeah, in quicksave. It's where I buy all my literature. <laughs> <laughs> How much are they knocking Tolstoy out at these days? <laughs> well, it's obviously a lost leader's going to spend a fortune in quicksave while you Spend a fortune... Exactly. In quicksave? Not in victory terms. <laughs> you can do a trolley dash and get changed for a tenner. <laughs> Sarah Vini, do you read these books? I actually listen to them on, on tape. You're too yeah. lazy to even read yeah. Harry Potter, which is a kid. That we listen lazy. to your advice every week about houses. You haven't got a clue how to live, for God's sake. 
Actually, that is true. I should be ashamed, shouldn't I? Yes. Yeah, they're true. better on tape, cos Stephen Fry reads them. Yes. Yeah, and also you can switch them off and chuck them out the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if Harry Potter was one of the most talked about things this week. Oh. Yes, it was. Well done. Yes, the second most talked about thing this week was the story of the launch of the Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I've not read it, but presumably the Half-Blood Prince is Prince Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, over to you right. and your team. What have the nation been talking about this week? I, th I think it's possibly Sienna leaving Jude. I think oh, that, that's yes. upset us all, yeah, really, yeah. hasn't it? You know, desperate, it's got the ideal perfect couple, and he's been cheating with the nanny. She's kept a diary, because nannies do that, don't they? And, said, uh, <laughs> and, and we, we made love on the pool table. Um, the balls were everywhere. <laughs> well done, Jude. I thought the interesting thing was that, was that, obviously, he's had sex with his nanny, which means uh, he's a classy guy. <laughs> I reckon the safe money is that her, the next nanny will be called Bernard. <laughs> Apparently, he said she was so good, you know, we were going to recommend her to the Beckhams. <laughs> There's a letter in, in uh, the paper, The Sun, uh, from Sadie Frost to Sienna, saying, you know, don't worry, things will get better. She's like, well, why would she listen to her? I don't get why she would write a letter to the newspaper to her, though. Because she <laughs> gleefully hasn't stopped laughing since it happened. <laughs> <laughs> there was a thing in the papers quoting Sadie Frost's PA. What does she do? Cut to her office. <laughs> 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 Hello? Uh, wrong number. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether Jude and his nanny are one of the most popular talking points this week. Oh, yes. yes, they are. One eye. Well done. One eye. Yeah, man. Yes, Jude Law was caught sleeping with the nanny. I suspect he'll be on the naughty step for quite some time. <laughs> the nanny is the most embarrassing thing Jude's been in since Alfie. <laughs> Sean Steen, what else have people been talking about this week? <laughs> uh, well, something I thought was very interesting was uh, there's a teacher's conference going on and a, a leading education expert suggested they get rid of the word failure from the, uh, from the school vocabulary, that kids are no longer fail because it discourages, what well, I would say, you can only say, like, maybe the, the more less achieving kids, the thicker kids. <laughs> I mean, they should get rid of some other words, like late. Get rid of late. <laughs> You're not late? No, I'm early. Just not as early as I should have been. <laughs> I'm not lazy. I'm energetically challenged. <laughs> or uh, I'm not a liar. I've just got a fact allergy. <laughs> I'm afraid that isn't in the top five most talked about things. My friend Mark had a threesome this week. There you go. Is that on the list? <laughs> Unless they did it in Trafalgar Square, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> what have the nation be talking about? Oh, I don't know. Team, any ideas? We're playing cricket against Australia, and we've won a, the toss. We've won the toss. Are they talking about that in the pubs up and down the country? No. I don't know. Because we lost the toss. Flashes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the old enemy, it's Australia, so is that's it... what makes it important. It's a made up sport, a sport that lasts for three, four, five days. Mm. Is ridiculous. What do you mean it's a made up sport? All They're sport. all made up. <laughs> <laughs> There's no great characters in cricket anymore, like Beefy Botham. You've got Shane Warne, the Australian. Obviously, he's like always putting it about, isn't he? He's like, he always insists that no sex during a game <laughs> is, that's about his limit, really. Let's have a look and see if the cricket's up there. Oh! Yes, it is. The fifth most talked about thing this week. I think he's up there in the week. England hasn't won the Ashes for 20 years. According to the Times, the last time England won, Terry Waite was kidnapped. The Australians are such bad losers. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there's still one to guess. Fingers on buzzers. What's the most talked about thing this week? The under-16 lad who sued the police for escorting him home. The police can, can um, escort uh, home kids if they, even if they haven't been badly behaved, if they're under-16. And this lad, who's only called W in the papers, took him to the High Court and won. I blame the parents. Fancy calling a kid W. Oh, no, it's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that crime boy. We've got crime boy up our way. He's always in trouble. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah. Crime boy's been at it again. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if Kids Curfews is in the top five. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. There is already a very successful scheme for keeping teenage boys off the streets. It's known as internet porn. <laughs> Right, well, I can tell you at the end of that, Sarah, Ian and Dave have two points. Ralph, Simon and Sean have two points. Oh. 
The next round is called The Poll with a Hole. We've looked through hundreds of surveys, past and present, from around the world, and unearthed some fascinating facts. Unfortunately, each statistic is missing one salient piece of information, so it's up to our panellists to fill in the gaps. Here's your first fact. It's from a survey featured in The Times from April of this year. 43% of UK kids worry that their parents what? Might get back together. <laughs> Most kids, the most embarrassing thing their parents do is start a band. Oh. Oh, that'd be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Dad on bass, mum on drums. Why don't you just tell us the answers? You've got us all here. We could be doing important show business work. <laughs> Me and Ralph could be opening a fate or something. Has anyone got a fate they need opening? <laughs> no, let's mm -hmm. continue with the quiz. All right. <laughs> 43% of UK kids worry that their parents... ..are coming to Glastonbury as well. <laughs> <laughs> you don't recognise me, I've painted my face. <laughs> you almost mentioned it before. Cos they'd embarrass them. Correct. That's it? That's it? Yes, 43% of UK kids worry that their parents will embarrass them. I remember I got embarrassed by my dad dancing at a family wedding. I say family wedding, it was gay pride. 78% <laughs> uh, of pensioners are satisfied with what? The walk-in bath. They're good at the walk-in baths. With a little door on them. <laughs> you get in, you shut the door, you sit down, and they've got to fill it. They've got plenty of time on their hands, obviously, old people, but they sit in the bath, and then they have you the bath. And then they've got to drain it before they can open the door to get out. Just imagine you sit there and the water goes out and they... What am I doing in here? Just <laughs> be having a bath. Start all over again. <laughs> no wonder this is bloody wrinkly, is it? 78% of pensioners are satisfied with their new baby with Penny Lancaster. <laughs> <laughs> is it 78%? percent of pensioners are satisfied with their bowling form. They like bowling, don't they? Crown green bowling. My granddad played since he was 93. He played right up till the day he died, the day before I was playing with him, and he bowled his foot to the other end of the green, and uh, it was quite good. And he showed it's the vlog, the vlog walking past, and he went, oh, am I there? Oh, am I there? He said, you're a foot in front. He said, what did he call me then? Oh, my <laughs> So, 78% of pensioners are satisfied with... Nice cup of tea and a sit-down. <laughs> oh, yeah. And making that noise when they sit down, going, ah, ah. <laughs> it's nice going out, but it's nice coming home. <laughs> I shall tell you, 78% of pensioners are satisfied with their meals on wheels. Oh. OK, your next one is from a survey featured in The Express in May. 93% of cat owners believe their pet helps them what? Is it drown out the sound of their biological clocks ticking? <laughs> Is it help some solve crimes? <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't want a crime fighting cat? <laughs> Fit in down the cat club. It's all right, it's with me. Milk? <laughs> yeah, I mean, people who do have cats, I mean, you can have a lot of fun with cats. I did have a cat for a short period of time, and I used to like, the thing I used to like doing with this, you know, when you pick a cat up by its sort of front legs, and you just hold it for a bit. They get longer and longer. <laughs> yeah, they do. And if you hold them, you can really stretch them out. You can get... <laughs> you start swinging them. <laughs> I like to go up the upstairs window and have them out on the street. <laughs> <laughs> They're very comforting cats. I think they help with um, calming down. Yes, I'll give you that. Yes, 93% of cat owners believe their pet helps them cope with stress. Of course, pets can also cause stress. I was distraught when my dog died. I had a lot of money riding on that fight. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen the size of the badger. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, I can tell you that Dave's team have four points and Sean's team have three points. Oh, okay.